Hi, David Chomet here. Currently, I'm dealing with a lot of overwhelm. How about you? Let's talk about the ways that we can deal with that and get things done. We'll get to it. Is this how you feel? <laughs> Many times I'm just so, just, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do. And it can be quite stressful. If this is your first time taking a moment to join me, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. I would be so happy to hear from you. Today's topic is a very, very personal one, and that is, oh, I'm super stressed out. There's so much going on. And I feel like I can't really get ahead of it. And I'm sure that me telling you that I'm stressed out is raising your stress level. So let me help bring it down a little bit. Because let me talk about some of the things that I do to reduce the stress level so that I can actually get the things done that I need to get done. The first is to breathe. It's going to be okay. There's a lot of things in life that um, involve permanent changes, things that... Well, once they happen, they irrevocably change your life, and most of us treat a whole lot of other things as important as those things. My own personal experience was, gosh, two and a half years ago, I almost died about four times uh, because of my asthma, and while that was in and of itself pretty horrible, one of the things that it's really helped me do is give me a um, measure what I'm facing. You know, I'm kind of stressed out. I've got a lot of work to do. I've got a couple of projects that I'm really working on that I'm kind of behind on. I've got people I need to contact, calls I need to return, all of this stuff. But I'm breathing. And so one of my first pieces of advice to you is to relax. Breathe. Take a moment to breathe. We are going to get through this together. Second, what I find is that what we have in life are a lot of distractions that are preventing us from reaching the goals that we want to reach. Many of those distractions are easy to remove evil distractions. They are distractions of watching TV, all kinds of other things. Getting past those is really the first step in decluttering your life. I've done videos, and I think I'll put a link one of them up there, about not answering the phone if you're in business. That's one of the steps. Turn off the notifications if you can. I'll just tell you, my anecdotal experience is that since I deleted Facebook and some other, and basically all other social media off of my phone, I am a much happier person, just across the board. And it's not that I consciously said, now I will be happy. I'm just happier. And so maybe that will work for you as well. In today's world, um, I think that there are very significant forces that want us want to keep us sort of agitated. And if you are removing yourself from that, you will allow yourself to not only have greater focus, but also to stay out of the agitation. Now, the second kind of distraction is a little bit more insidious at the end of the day. They are the things that you can do, that you want to do, that you should do, but are not of primary importance. And so part of the challenge is going to be for you to develop an, an idea of what is really, really on fire at the moment. Um, I've worked through some of those things indirectly through what I call the calendar exercise, and I'll put the video link to the video up there. But even apart from that sort of regimented, rigorous look at your calendar, there are many things in your life that you would like to do but ultimately, they will only cause more distraction. I'll give you an example. My son um, plays baseball. If you've watched this channel for 10 minutes or you've seen other things, you know he's still very involved in baseball games. Um, he made the all-star team up in New England, and I really wanted to go to the game. And I could have. It would have been expensive in terms of time as well as money. And so ultimately, largely because of the time factor, I decided that I wasn't going to do it because I just couldn't afford to be away. Now, is that a unique experience that I should have gone to? Perhaps. But given all of the other things that I've got going on, I really needed to focus on those things and, and, and stay on top of a couple of projects that are really very, very important. There will be other baseball games. He has made other all-star teams. He has played, he plays like 75 games a year. And I'm in attendance at at least 40 or 50 of them. So it's not as if I'm, you know, missing out on on 
his baseball experience, but rather I am metering it against a lot of the other things that I've got floating around. The the third thing, part of the, the feeling of overwhelm is not knowing and sitting down and making a very long list that, and it can take you days to make this list, I'm just telling you, of everything you have to do, just pouring it all out onto a sheet of paper is one of the most medicinal exercises that you'll ever do. Now that's the first step in the calendaring exercise, and I won't go through what all the different things um, that the calendaring exercise involves, but the mere fact of writing all of the things down that you need to do will help you develop some structure around those things and give you an opportunity to better understand what you've really got in front of you because the unknown in many ways is the most overwhelming part of it all. The fourth thing I would suggest that you do is small-term sacrifices. What that basically means is in order to alleviate some of the pressure, you're going to have to give up things. In some ways, that's my the baseball game I missed. It's a small-term sacrifice. Getting up a little bit earlier, small-term sacrifice. If you make those small ones, you'll find that if you use that time well, you will do great things, and there will be a snowball effect as you start to knock things down, get past things. The last thing that I'll suggest, and this is somewhat selfish or self-promoting or self-something, I don't know, um, is to seek help. And... Sometimes that help is in the form of a virtual assistant. Sometimes that uh, help is in the form of a psychotherapist. Um, the, the myth of the Horatio Alger story where it's one man lifting himself up, fighting against whatever, is a bunch of BS. Don't believe it for a second. Behind every successful person is a whole cadre of people who have made that possible. So don't think that you can go it alone. Don't think that you should go it alone. Instead, know that there is an entire community of people who stand ready to help you with whatever the challenge is. And more importantly, there's a whole cadre of people who have probably faced a similar set of challenges in their own life, whether those be personal, professional, or otherwise. The key for you is to ask, is to try to find those people, is to look for them. I'm happy to be part of that search. If it makes sense, by all means, put a comment down below. would love to hear from you. And in the meantime, breathe. We're going to be okay. If you've liked this video, please comment. Make a, you know, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to hear from you. And go out and have a terrific day. I'm David Shomet from Shomet Solutions. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.